In a previous video, I showed you how you can make enemies track and chase you better using Raycast. In this video, I want to show you how you can make the enemy smarter by detecting things like edges and walls. I will show you two different techniques for wall detection, one that is quick and straightforward, and then one that takes a little more setup but will give you more control over your enemy. The code I'm using builds off a previous video about using Raycast to detect a player. I'll leave a link in the description if you're curious and want to check that out. However, it's not required and you should be able to follow along and apply these concepts to your own game. So whether you're following along or you're trying to add these concepts to your game, you're going to want two Raycasts. You're going to want one looking out and then you're going to want one looking down. These are what we're going to use to detect walls and ledges. If you want to know the ins and outs of exactly what the script is doing and how it's detecting the player, I recommend you go check out the previous video on Raycast. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to skim through the important parts. At the top of the script, we're declaring a right bounds and a left bounds. And then in our ready, we're setting them to a vector two. This will create a left and right bounds for the enemy to pace back and forth in. And all the logic of when the enemy should change directions and start walking the other way is in this change direction script. Currently, all it's doing is getting to the right and left bounds and just flipping back and forth. The only time it breaks away from that logic is when it detects the player and then it goes into a chase state and it ignores its bounds and it chases the player until it can no longer find the player and then it'll go back to its left and right bounds. So to make it so that our enemy can detect ledges and walls, we're just going to simply adjust this function. We're going to start with the ledges because that's the easiest. At the top here, we have a reference to our raycast that's pointing down. It's called raycast down. So back in our change direction function, we're just going to add a little logic here. All we are doing is we're checking that the raycast is not colliding. Because when the enemy is walking across the ground, we have that raycast that's pointed down directly in front of him. And so at all times, it should be seeing the ground that it's walking on. If at any point it's not seeing the ground, that means the enemy is on a ledge. As the enemy is walking, you can see the raycast pointed down is always hitting the ground until it gets to a ledge and then it is no longer touching anything. And that's how we can detect that the enemy is about to walk off a ledge. So when that happens, we're going to turn the enemy around. We're going to check what direction the enemy is currently going, and then we're just going to flip it by scaling the sprites dot X to one or negative one, depending on which direction we want to flip them. And then at the end of our if, we're doing a return because we don't want any of our previous logic of the wander and chase state to take effect, because even if the enemy is chasing the player, we still want them to turn around on a ledge. So we call return here. So this part doesn't run. And you can see our enemy is just pacing back and forth and no longer walking off the edge. When it detects the edge, it turns around. So as promised, I'm going to show you two different options that you can use for your enemy to detect whether it's touching a wall or not. This first option is pretty straightforward and will cover most use cases you might have. Character body 2Ds have a built-in method called is on wall that can detect whether they are touching a wall or not. And in this case, we're just going to use that to determine if the enemy is hitting a wall and then turn them around. And the logic here is the same that it was up here. We're just detecting what direction they're currently going and then turning them around. And then like before, we're going to call return at the end of our if so that the rest of it does not run. So you can see as he comes down, he now hits the wall and goes back the other way. So now we're going to comment out option one, and I'm going to show you a second way that you can detect whether the enemy is touching or approaching a wall. So this option is going to be a little more set up, but it'll give you a lot more finer grain control over your enemy. You can use the same horizontal raycast that we're using to detect the player. You could also add a third one that has a shorter distance if you want a separate one just to look for walls. Currently, our player detection raycast has a target position of 125 pixels. So it's looking out 125 pixels out. You may want a shorter one for the wall, or you can use the same one. If we come back to our script, the first thing we need to do is we need to add an export variable for our tile map. So add this line, then we need to save it. And then wherever your enemy is in your level, we need to go click on it. And then we need to assign our tile map. This way, the enemy can detect the different tiles in the tile set. Let's go back to our enemy scene. Let's go scroll down to our change direction function. And then right here's our new logic. So the difference here is in my game, I have slopes. So if we turn on visible collision shapes, and then we run this, you can see this is detecting the wall and it sees the wall, but it also sees the tile set as it's going up the slope, if you watch here. So it would get stuck in a just sitting here spinning back and forth pattern. So what we need to do is we need to tell it what tiles to look for, or more importantly, what tiles to ignore. So in our new option, we're going to check if the raycast is colliding. And if it is, we're going to get the collider from the raycast. We're going to make sure the collider is not the player. 
Because if it is the player, then it's going to, in our previous logic, it's going to start chasing him. So then we're going to grab this tile is our export variable from up top that we set our tile map to. We're going to use this to get the collision point. We're going to call tile local to map, and then we're going to pass in the collision point of our raycast. And then with the collision point, we can actually get the atlas coordinates of our tile set. So if you click on your tile, make it a little bigger, and we go to tile set. So click select. Then if you click on a tile set, you can get the atlas coordinates. So this is 19, 1, 21, 20, and then the Y is 1. And then 19, 2, 22, and then likewise get the downward slopes. So you can get the atlas coordinates for any tiles that the enemy may come in contact with that you want him to ignore. Let's go back into our ant script. So we're getting the atlas coordinates of the collision point. So now this tile atlas variable is going to equal the tile atlas coordinates in our tile set that the raycast is colliding with. I then created an array of all the tile atlas coordinates that I want the enemy to ignore. So now it's just a simple check. If the tile atlas is in that array, then we're just going to return, which means we're going to do nothing and we're going to prematurely end this function. If it's colliding with something that's not the player and then not in our array, then we're going to turn the enemy around. We're going to get the current direction and then we're going to flip them. Then like before, we're going to call return so the rest of the logic doesn't run. So you can see when the raycast hits the wall, it's going to turn around and it's going to ignore the slopes. Well, I suppose.